All right, I want to talk about something now, which is a way that we can compute a minimum spanning tree more efficiently if the points are in the plane, so the flat Euclidean plane. So this is going to be using something called a Delaunay triangulation. And the way this works is, okay, so here's a Delaunay triangulation. So, so this is a graph that you could draw on these points. And actually, this, this graph doesn't have too many edges compared to the complete graph that we were talking about. So, in fact, it only has big O of V edges. You can prove that um, because it's what's called a planar graph. And, and so that's, that's something you can, can prove. So, so you, you can draw this without any crossings. And that, that somehow means that you have big O of V edges. Okay. But so, so one way to define this, how did, I, how did I come up with this graph in the first place? Um, one way to define this is um, if I take each triangle and I create what's called a circum... Oh, this is a bit busy. Maybe I'll... Let, let me do a simpler one here. Uh, let's try this. So if I draw a circumcircle around a triangle, the Delaunay triangulation, so a circumcircle, it's just, it's just, it's just the circle that you would draw that, that circumscribes the triangle. So I'm, I'm showing the centers here in, in red, but but the Delaunay triangulation is what you get when you draw circumcircles that only contain the points of the triangle and the boundary and that, that are empty inside otherwise. So the circumcircle of these three points does not contain any of the other three points. That's the idea. The circumcircle of these three points does not contain any of the other points. So a double line triangulation is, is connecting these points with triangles so that each circumcircle is empty except for the three points on its boundary. And it looks quite nice. It's, it's a way of drawing triangles to connect the points that, that it's that sort of evenly um, distributes them. And, and actually one thing you can say about it, one, one of the many nice properties is that it, it maximizes the minimum angle in any triangle. So, so they're kind of the e most even triangles you could come up with. And so one thing that's really interesting is um, a minimum spanning tree is actually a subset it's a subgraph of the Delaunay triangulation in, in two dimensions. So working with this is a heck of a lot better than working with the complete graph. There, there's so many fewer edges. So, so if you're going to do a minimum spanning tree on this, it would be much faster. So, so you can compute this as a pre-processing step and then do the minimum spanning tree. So this is something I want to have you do on the next homework. And so I'll just show you really quickly how to do a Delaunay triangulation in um, Python. So here what I've done is I've set up some random points. And you could look, you could just make the complete graph on these points, sort the distances in ascending order. And you know, you would have n squared edges. So n squared things you'd have to sort and then you could run Kruskal's algorithm. But it'll be faster if, if we do a Delaunay triangulation first and really narrow down the edges. So, so that's what I do. Um, actually, if I go and look at the documentation here, let's see a little example. So if Here's what it gives me back. It gives me back, so if I were to compute this here, I would say tri is equal to Delaunay x. So what I've done here, x is actually a two-dimensional array where the first column is the x-coordinates of my points in 2D and the second column is the y-coordinates of my points in 2D. And that is what um, Delaunay method as part of SciPy here, this is this library in Python. That's what it's expecting you to send along. And so what it gives back is, is actually a list of triangles. If I say tri.simplices, that's what it is. Yeah. Um, this gives me the, the indices of the vertices that are involved in each triangle. So actually, first thing I want to do, I'm going to make a little method here to help me convert this to a list of edges here. So what I'll say is, um, Edges is equal to, maybe I'll make an edge set here, and I'll say, I'll pass along those triangles. And I'll say for, you know, i, j, k, in tries. Then I'll say, um, well, actually, let's see, it's probably a little, I can reuse my code a little more here. If I say for, um, try in tries, and then I'll say, for k in range three, and then I'll say i j is equal to try an index k. This is gonna look a little weird. 
try at index k plus 1 mod 3. <laughs> so let me, actually, let me show you what this does really quick on, on just a single triangle. So let's say I had this triangle 13, 1, 2. So let's, yeah, let's say that I had try 13, 1, 2. So if I print out what that gives me, that's going to give me 13, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 13. So there are three edges in a triangle that I want to consider. And, and those are the three. So, so this, this with the mod here, this cycles through. It says, I want 0, 1, 1 to 2, and then 2 back to 0. Those are the three edges that are involved in a triangle. And so, so that's how I get them. The other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to say i, j is equal to, just so I have a canonical ordering, I'm going to make i be the smaller index and, and j be the larger index. So just to check that here. So we got 1, 13, 1, 2, and 2, 13. Okay, so hopefully you understand how that loop works. Let me go and put that back in here. And so that's each edge, and what I'll do is I'll say edges.append, or edges.add, because it's a set ij. Now some, you know, some of these edges are gonna show, actually all of these edges are gonna show up more than once, <clears throat> except for the boundary. So, um, so that's why I have a set here, because I might be double counting. I don't want to double count the edges. So then I'll just return um, a list of these. So let me show you what I have here. So if I said, okay, edges equals list tries to edges, or sorry, list um, edges equals tries to edges try dot simplices. I didn't like that. Set.add takes one argument to give, and I meant to say add this tuple to the other set. Okay, so supposedly here's all my edges. And so maybe, let me just draw them real quick. I'll, I'll plot this again, but then I'll draw the edges on top. So I'll plot this, and I'll say for i, j, and edges, um, plt.plot. Well, maybe I'll take out the first point. xi is equal to x big x at index i, xj is equal to big x at index j. And so I'll first I'll plot a line from the x-coordinate of the first point to the x-coordinate of the second point, and then using the y-coordinate of the first point, going to the y-coordinate of the second point. Let's see what that looks like. Oh, I didn't like that. PLT.plot. Um, let's see. Whoops, I meant to say index 1 there. OK, there we go. Anyway, <laughs> there's the Delaunay triangulation. It's nice and colorful because Matplotlib is cycling through a uh, color palette when it plots the different edges. But, but yeah, so, so there's how you get a Delaunay triangulation. So when, when you go to do this in the assignment, I want to see you um, use those edges and sort those edges in descending order of length as as a pre-processing step for the minimum spanning tree. So maybe just, just you know, real quickly, I'll also just remind you how to compute the distances of, of these edges, because since you'll need to sort in descending order of distances. So I'll say, you know, for i, j in edges, um, distances, or I'll just say distance, that is going to, you know, again, I'll, pu I'll pull both these points out, and I'll say the distance is equal to, it's going to be the x coordinates, the difference in the x coordinate between the two squared plus the distance or the difference between the y coordinate squared and square rooted. Now actually, if, if you're computing the minimum spanning tree, it doesn't really matter so much to do the square root. Is that true? No, I guess, no, I do. I'm sorry. I do want to do the square root. Yes. Okay. Anyway, then I would say distances.append d. Okay, anyway, that's a bunch of distances. Maybe I'll just, I'll just, just to show you that this actually is, is working properly, maybe I'll, I'll figure out what, what's the longest distance. I'll say idx is equal to np.argmax um, d, or distances. And I'll just plot that as a big line. So it looks like it's probably this one. Let's just see. I'll plot that as, as a dashed line there. So I'll say plt.plot. Um, I'll do the same thing here. I'll say xi is equal to x at edges idx0, xj is equal to 
exit edges idx one. So so I pull I, you know I'm pulling out here here the the index of the edge which has the maximum distance, and now I'm going to pull out the two points that are associated to that edge, and let me go ahead and then just plot them, and I'll say line style equals dashed here, and then I'll say uh, what is it line width equals I'll make it big. Oh, that's too big. <laughs> Uh, okay, anyway, yes, so, so there was the big edge. Uh, maybe let's we'll make the highlight black here. Okay, so anyway, hopefully this gives you enough hints to, to work with the double onyx triangulation and to do a minimum spanning tree on it. And so that's, yeah, that's, that's how you would do that in, in, in Python there. Just to show, I don't know, maybe I'll do one more different, different one here. I'll change the seed. Let's, let's do that point set now. There's the Delaney triangulation there. There's the longest edge. All right, so, so you have this code and that, that'll help you. But there is one more thing I want to talk about for improving traveling salesperson pass. So I'll do that in a moment.